Hi, I'm Nicholas Chavez. I'm the Chief Technical Officer of Bitcoin R, and I'm going to show you how to install the Bitcoin R mining client on your Mac today. Okay, so here's what we're working with. We've got two MacBook Pro systems. We've got a Catalina, and we've got a Mojave. The Catalina system has got a 2.7 gigahertz processor with eight gig of RAM. The Mojave processor is 3.1 gigahertz and it's got 16 gig of RAM. Now I'm gonna show the demo today using the system with the lower system requirements, which is the Catalina system. Again, 2.7 gigahertz, eight gig of RAM. So as long as your system meets those minimum system requirements, we think you could probably mine blocks, at least in the early days. So let's go ahead and get started with the Catalina system. Okay, let's get started. Let's open Safari, go to the bitcoinr.org website, and then let's click mine Bitcoin R. Okay, this is the mining page. Let's go to the Mac OS X client, click it. Do you want to allow downloads on bitcoinr.org? So we'll go ahead and say allow. And we'll see up here that it has been downloaded. Show the downloads. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get to our desktop. Make this easy on ourselves. And we'll just drag it over here to the desktop. Perfect. So let's go ahead and double click it. And they make this Super simple on Mac. Go ahead and grab the Bitcoin R core, drag it over to applications and drop it. Okay, we see that it's already been placed there. Sometimes it's hard to know with Mac, so we'll just go ahead and say stop. And we'll see what we can see. There we go. Applications, Bitcoin R core. Double click it. It says developer can't be verified. What does that mean? Okay, looks like it's fine. On your Mac, choose the Apple menu, system preferences, click security and privacy, and then click general. There's the Apple menu. Go to System Preferences. Okay, clear that out of the way. Then it says to go to Security and Privacy. We see that here. Okay, and then it says click General. That's up here. And so now we see the little warning here, Bitcoin R was blocked from use because it's not from an identified developer. Goodness knows what that means. Okay, so let's go ahead and click the lock, authenticate. We're gonna go ahead and type in the password here. Let's go ahead and type the right password in here. There we go. And let's just say open anyway. Okay, so it says Mac OS cannot verify the developer of Bitcoin R Core. Are you sure you want to open it? Click open. Okay. So we see that we have 24 gig of free space available. We need at least two gig of data. This is gonna increase as Bitcoin R gets older as a network and the blockchain gets larger. Currently, I think uh, the Bitcoin Core blockchain is now 16 gig, but it's been around for nine years. So this should be fine for a while. So let's go ahead and click OK. We see the splash screen open up, starting up. OK, we see that it's syncing the headers down here, 15.8% complete. You do not need to wait for that to get all the way to 100. Go ahead and hide this. 
and let's check our network connections. Okay, so it's already found three servers, three nodes that are actively connected to the Bitcoin R network. So we're gonna not click that, do not click it because it will disable the network. And let's just go ahead and minimize this for now. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get back to the bitcoinr.org website and let's click mine Bitcoin R once again. See in the middle of the page, we'll find Mac OS X again. Right now we want to go down to Mac OS X tools and click that button. We can see that it downloaded and it downloaded a file called Bitcoin R hyphen tools hyphen Mac OS dot tar. Let's go ahead and make this easy on ourselves and put that right there on the desktop again. Okay. And so for those of you who don't know, a .tar file is just like a .zip file. Um, it's more Linux compatible, which is the system that Mac is based upon. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it gives us a file folder. Let's go ahead and stick it over here and pop it open real quick. All right, now you'll see that there are five items in this folder, about 12.72 gigabytes. Now we've got Bitcoin R dash CLI, which is the command line interface. We've got the transaction engine. We've got the configuration file We've got the D file, which stands for daemon, and then we've got the shell file, which is in charge of the mining. Now, all of this we're going to put in different places. And so you'll need to follow along and you'll need to do a little bit inside of your Mac terminal, which is something that you may or may not be familiar with, but don't worry because I'm gonna walk you through it. Okay, let's go ahead and open up another finder window. We want to go into applications. So if your MacBook doesn't already have an application shortcut on the finder window or somewhere over here in the favorites, a real simple way to access it via the keyboard is by holding shift command and a all at the same time. And it'll pop up the applications window. Nice and simple. So when we go in here, I want you to tap Bitcoin R and I want you to show package contents. Okay. That'll open up a folder called contents. We want to go into Mac OS. And then what we want to do is we want to move some of these files. Actually, we want to move all of these files with the exception of the .conf file. This is actually not my MacBook, so I am struggling a little bit with how the keyboard setups are done. Let's see if we can get this moved over. There we go. Ah, so this has got iCloud drive set up. I'm not sure why it has iCloud drive set up. Again, this is not my laptop. This belongs to my son. Um, and I think it's not letting us move any of these files until after this stuff has been uploaded to iCloud drive. Okay, looks like it's done uploading. There we go. And now just removed from iCloud Drive. I'm really not entirely sure why folks use iCloud Drive. I'm sure there's a great reason why. Uh, I'm not a big fan. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay, so let's just go ahead and clean these up. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it by name. Okay, so now 
we have one file left in the Bitcoin R hyphen tools hyphen Mac OS folder. What are we going to do with it? Well, we have to put it into a place that this Mac doesn't want us to see, which makes it a little bit more complicated than it probably should be. But it's like I tell people, everything on Mac that is supposed to be hard is super easy. And everything that's supposed to be super easy ends up being pretty hard. So follow me here, you're gonna do fine. But first let's go ahead and go to Finder, okay? And let's go ahead and open a new Finder window. Okay, great. So first we're gonna go to Macintosh hard drive. We're gonna go to users. And then you're gonna find your username here. So go ahead and do that and just click it. All right, now we're looking for a folder in here that is hidden. And instead of trying to unhide all of your hidden folders and so on and so forth, we're just gonna make this easy. We're gonna go up to go at the top of the screen. And then we're going to say, go to folder. Okay, and then we're gonna type library in here. You can see it's already populated on mine, but I'll go ahead and retype it. And then we're gonna click go. So it puts us into the hidden folder library. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on application support. Okay, and so once we're in here, we can scroll down depending on what kind of programs you have installed. Go down to Bitcoin R and double click. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is the directory that we want to put this configuration file in. So let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and grab this configuration file and let's just put it in this folder. Do you wanna remove it from the iCloud drive? Yes, please. I'm not sure why it's up there anyway. Um, okay, so great, now it's where it should be. Uh, it's worth noting that this configuration file does have a password in it. You can use the default password. I recommend to change it if you uh, know how to do that. If you don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Now we're going to get to the final component of this install that has been quite frankly, unnecessarily hard. So we have this Mac OS folder up, but now we have to open this in something called the terminal. Well, the terminal is a little bit difficult to access because again, we're dealing with hidden files. So, the best way to do this, honestly, is to create an error. So let's go ahead and create the error. Basically says, hey, Bitcoin R is already running. So we say, okay, sorry about that. And then let's grab the path here. Right here. Okay. Just like I'm doing, all right. And then say copy. So this is the path that we're going to need to get to inside terminal. So go ahead and bring up terminal. Actually, we have to get out because that was terminal. So let's bring terminal back up and then we'll type CD for change directory. And then let's go ahead and paste it. And let's take out that last of the command so it ends in mac os forward slash and let's see if it got us there type ls for list files sure did look there we go just like we wanted so now we are in that folder and we can tell that because the files are the same so there's bitcoin r hyphen cli and there's bitcoin r hyphen cli same thing with mine.sh mine.sh so we know that we're in the right place okay now what we're going to do is we're going to make that shell file that mine.sh executable now that sounds harder than it is okay so we're this is literally going to take 20 more seconds so we're going to type chmod so we're changing and modifying the file we're going to type plus x and we're going to type mine.sh Okay, and there we go, that's done. 
Okay, we're almost done here. We've just changed the mine.sh file, our shell file that is responsible for the mining activity from being non-executable to being executable. Now we're actually going to execute the mining program. This is how you mine XBR. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just close out of the Bitcoin R program. So let's go ahead and show it. We see that all the balances are zero and um, let's check our network. The network is, it's got an active connection, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and get out of it. So go up to the top, go to quit Bitcoin R core. Okay, it says it's shutting down. Okay, great. Looks like it shut down, great. Let's just go ahead and restart it now. So go back down to the tray, start it again. So that way we can get a nice clean start. You can hide that. Go down here. We've got three active connections, that's great. Go ahead and minimize that for now. Okay, now go back to your terminal window and type period forward slash mine dot sh, okay? And now click return. It says press control C to stop mining. And when you see these brackets here going down, that means it's mining on your MacBook Pro. And after a certain number of minutes or hours, you may just mine a block of XBR. And right now in the beginning, it's 100 XBR per block. So it's a pretty significant block reward. It's not ever gonna get higher than that. And so what we can do is we can bring up the Bitcoin R core window and we can have that sitting here. Boom, look at that. We just mined a block live on the 14th of April at, let's see what time, 8.30 p.m. And that is the hash of the block. So now this MacBook Pro has got 100 XBR in its wallet. We did it. We mined a block using a MacBook Pro running Catalina on a 2.7 gigahertz processor with only eight gig of RAM. You can do the very same thing on your Mac as long as it meets those minimum requirements, at least in the early days. So don't wait. Go and install the Bitcoin R mining client on your Mac and start mining. Good luck. Thank <laughs> you.